Yeah, yeah, what's good, yo? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where, as always, it's shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for this afternoon, or morning, wherever you happen to be, or evening, for happen to be, Pasco and Dillinger representing, as always, I got my man with me, I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Yo, what it do, you know what it is, man, Shadow Work to God, aka the GOAT artist, aka LB, Lotta Del, all soul wars creator, brain game, radio.com, in the building, 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 UK friendly, time, 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 one more time, 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 time. Yes, sir. yes, sir. And Bring you undisputed, spooted, 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 spooted. The gang is all here, here, here. <laughs> yo. Bring in the house, definitely in North America, Europe, and worldwide, yo. I can dig it, man. And as always, I got my other man with me. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Yo, what's good? You already know who this is. Your boy, King P. Bodega P. Bodega Box in the building. You know what it is? Ring Gang Radio all day, every day, twice on Sundays. And oh, wait, I got to say it again. Ring Gang Radio all day, every day, twice on Sundays. And just so everybody knows, I am I am the leader of the UK versus Mexican anonymous support group. <laughs> Lord knows they needed a win last night. Hey, that's, that's real talk. <laughs> that's real talking. We'll definitely been ragging on them since last year. <laughs> Yo, and, and that's real, man. Though, but you know, honestly, P was uh, it was actually I really didn't think that uh, P would actually come, you know, come on the podcast today. But you know, as always, See, that's man, why we ain't changed the time. It, it was, so hey, I was like, King P will find the way. He'll find the way. <laughs> But yeah, Pete, obviously you're clear, you, you know, you're not, uh, you're not working, you're not fighting any crime today. You're just doing what you're doing. Is that correct? Yes, I'm in parts unknown. No rats around here, no nothing. Actually, I got to worry about raccoons and bears, you know what I'm saying? But I'm good. That's what it is. I mean, we always got to worry about coons, if you know what I mean. But these ones are more ugly and dig into my garbage. So, yeah. No. I don't know. <laughs> the ones oh, I'm my about goodness. Two feet. <laughs> and always talking about garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Semantics. You got to love it. <laughs> But you know, as always, though, Peter, we definitely salute you for your service. You know, and you making it out to this podcast, man. That's real. And uh, as as always, man, we got you know another one of my mans here. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. What's good? This is uh, PJ, the fight architect. You know, man's just out here in it. Um, just here for the early podcast for helping everybody here. I am in parts unknown. Uh, LB knows I've been actually working on climbing the mountains, so I've been working on training for that. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I'm just here to do a special guest appearance. Yes, sir. Special PG. indeed. Yes, the PJ is definitely here, man. You know, so it's good to have him on there from parts unknown. But I guess to know where his parts, you know, they drank milk out of a bag and shit, you know, to get my drift. So Atlantis. <laughs> yeah, word though, but it's definitely it's definitely good to you know to get the fight architect out here every once in a while when he's not out there, he's not out here practicing his martial arts and shit like that. You know what I mean? So yeah, salute, man. And last, find my arcana apparently to that bad movie. No, don't. I, I actually watched that shit last night after the boxing. I, uh, yeah, I don't want to go into any rants. I don't want. I got. I got to not go into a rant about that. But yes. <laughs> But last and certainly not least, you know, I got, you know, got, you know, another one of our mans, and I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's your boy Conscious Pilot, aka the West Coast Avenger Number One Contender, preparing for liftoff, destination Ring Gang Radio. Hey, Ready to, trying to get my claim for top five pound for pound. That's all. That's what it is, man. You know, Conscious Pilot always elevating above the masses and shit. You know, that's real. Uh, so yeah, man, we definitely got plenty of, uh, you know, plenty of stuff to talk about today. And uh, obviously, we're going to start with the recap with the excellent fight, you know, between Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez for the undisputed, you, know, you want to call it light welterweight or, or, or super, uh, 
super, super lightweight. lightweight. <laughs> or like, well, yeah, super lightweight. Yeah, I don't know why they have two fucking names. That's annoying, but whatever. It is. <laughs> yeah. But uh, before we get into that one, obviously, I mean, you saw some parts of the undercard too. The undercard had some stuff to stuff to mention, uh, particularly now another top ranked prospect bites the dust, you know, with uh, Elvis Rodriguez and Kenneth Sims. Uh, yeah, because I know me and LB had some conversations about this, you know, but uh, it was in you know in our chat or whatever. But uh, yeah, Elvis Rodriguez, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, there, you know, he was mowing down some cats in like his first eleven fights, save for like one no contest, and then he goes the distance in his last fight. You know, it's a learning experience. You know, it's, it's good not to, you know, become a one trick pony. All you can do is just knock somebody. You gotta eventually show some boxing skill. Message. Um, <laughs> So in this particular case, you know, Elvis Rodriguez faced a, a, a Kenneth Sim, who was another prospect who, not, unfortunately, you know, was not, uh, who didn't have the type of uh, backing that Rodriguez had. But Sims is quality as he's pretty much, he's sparred with anyone, anyone who's actually been worth a damn around his, around his divisions from a Manny Pacquiao and all that. So like, dude, I mean, Andre War was, talk, you know, was talking about him as like, you, you know, he, you know, he's a he's a person you don't want to spar, but you know he got the talent. And man, Ward was making him sound like a fucking Hall of Famer, bro. I'm like, chill, chill, like, yeah. <laughs> the dude, dude is solid. He's good, but yo, chill, chill. I mean, I understand what Ward is doing. I think Ward was trying. To, I mean, I, I know Ward was just trying to big up the man because you know, this, you know, no one was giving him any chance. I mean, dude was like plus two thousand in the odds, bro. Like, you know, so. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, Sims, though, I mean, I know LB has some has has some uh, you know has some criticism of how Sims you know how Sims perform. But to, to me, I think it's also like we, we put some of this on Rodriguez. But if you're the heavier puncher and you're able to actually box with the dude, why won't you use your you know your power to actually try to get an advantage instead of you know trying to play tip for tap, you know and. Um, Sims, though, I mean, I think everyone can tell from, from the first one if you watch the fight that Sims control that shit. Sims got off first and last, you know, which is something because most people like you get off first, but then they actually, but then actually they, you know, they go, you know, they go in the tank and they just look the counter without really trying to be offensive. And that's why people get the game fucked up. Sims was first and last in everything that he did. And Rodriguez uh, just simply just didn't have, although he boxed well at times, he just simply didn't have an answer for that. And uh, I know, and also too, and also another thing to criticize too is like, you know, Rodriguez, like, why didn't he go on the inside? Like, Sims did, but he went late in the fight. And then by that time, he had already built up enough of a lead. So we didn't nearly, it didn't really affect him all that much. Um, but LB, what, what else did you think about that fight? I mean, I thought it was a solid fight. It was, it was kind of boring. Like, it was mid, you know. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was. I mean, look for the for the fight. I was anticipating from the main event. This shit was trash. When I put it in, perspective. <laughs> especially. I mean, you got niggas saying Danny Garcia, Errol Spence was a boring fight. If that fight was boring, then this fucking fight was trash. Well, I mean, I didn't. I didn't like the Spence Garcia fight either. So I mean, that's. <laughs> yeah. So so both of these fights are trash. Man. Fuck it. This fight was trash. Either <laughs> guy was moving his head. Anytime someone threw a punch at the other, they fucking backed up two feet, or they caught it clean because they backed up. No head movement. Nobody's head off the line. There was no urgency from either guy. It was like a tit for tat, fucking boring ass fight. But one guy looked a little better than the other off a of ring generalship. And one guy landed the slightly harder punches, and then he kind of looked lost in the last two or three rounds. The end. Yep, pretty much. And then, you know, Kenneth Sims got the decision. It was a 78 74 on two cards, and then 76 76 even. So, uh, yeah, you know, so it, it was a, it was a, it was an upset. You know, just like, you know, just like when old boy on PBC, Vito Manuki got boxed up by a real unknown. You know, so yeah, it was a, uh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, right. Yo, yo, shout out the official scorecard boxing. Nah. <laughs> Bad days for wildcard and Rodriguez in the future. <laughs> That's why he does train out of there. Shit. You remember the, they was talking about um, Freddie Roach was saying he's going to be the head of this stable and all this shit? 
Yeah, well, Freddie, but I mean, I've seen the trailer. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, Elvis has left the building, so. <laughs> <laughs> Back foot box out that motherfucker, actually. Shit. Yeah, in, in, a, in, a, in a ho-hum fight. That, that, that's the only thing yeah. I can describe that fight as, ho-hum. It was, dude, it's like, honestly, I felt like, like, I'm surprised the refs gave uh, Simmons credit for everything he was doing, because... Low key, I was just like, wow, it looked like he met his ass might get robbed. Like, I mean, I mean, that was the thing. Like, he controlled it, but I felt like he could have, he could have put his foot in Elvis' ass. I don't yeah. know why he didn't do more. Yeah, that's what I'm he, he did. He did enough to get the W, but it was just like he could have really put his foot down and really just he he could have really hurt him. But yeah, because yeah, like, if they would have gave him a draw. Everybody would have been screaming. I would have just been like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> "Well, you know." You yeah, but at, le- le- but at least this time, at least the judges got it right and it prevailed. So, like, I, I can't, yeah. be, I can't be too bad. Like, yeah, Sims I thought got they, the win. Give it to Rodriguez. I thought they were gonna give it to Rodriguez. Yeah, and I said, that's what I was waiting for. I was just waiting for a fucker. I was like, okay, let me just see what's gonna happen now with this fuckery. That's, you know. But like, I mean, the scores. I, I had no, there was nothing wrong with the scores. I mean, the, if you saw the draw, you saw the draw. But seventy seven four. I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. You know, so like, kudos for Sims. Hopefully, he learns from this and hopes that you know, yeah. I mean, yes, he got first and last, though. But you know, you just gotta you know smooth out some of the more wrinkles in this game and. Right, and the same thing for uh, for Rodriguez too. <laughs> oh, Rodriguez got to do a lot of shit, but if I could say it so simple, the three things he got to work on: he got to work on that defense. He got to move his line off the head, do something, faint, move his head, slip punches. I don't know, watch some fucking um, Prime Tyson or uh, uh, Roman Chocolatito videos. Um, learn how to pick off punches better. Like your defense just got to improve. That's number one. Number right. two. The fucking arsenal gotta improve like like i said go watch some fucking older videos some tapes or something because all this jab jab one two bullshit that ain't enough when you get to a certain level it only works if if that shit's money or you're one of these guys who throw fucking 70 80 punches around so so one at least one of those one twos is going to connect but if that's not going to happen then increase the punch arsenal um throw some mix it up more you know, I don't know, some some drills gotta be different in the gym. You gotta make some adjustments. With that said, he kept it competitive, you know, cl- you know, through the fight, but he, he lost clearly. So Word. and the third thing, um I don't know, uh, third thing is repeat one and two. <laughs> no, uh, the third no, the third thing would be to, to be de- to develop a better inside game. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cause he was he was befuddled when like when he when he was on the inside like he needs better variation if they, if not if not develop an inside game then work on better variations like yeah. he just became he just became he went with the simple formula over and over even though it wasn't working. Mm-hmm. It was just it was the whole. It's a reflection. I'm not gonna fight better, just fight harder. Yeah, it's a reflection. Maybe the guy of fell what was exactly with the <laughs> Maybe the guy fell in love a little bit with his with his punching because you know Dominicans and their their power. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you was gonna say, PG? It's a reflection of how people work in the gym. How you perform in the fight is how what you do in the gym. You can tell what they worked on, what they didn't. Yep. And also, Sorry, Freddie. And shout out to Pro. I just saw that he's uh he's he signed on or whatever, you know. And uh, salute pro, you know, definitely salute pro for the video that he made. You know, up because he saw on our Twitter. You know, make sure you uh, make sure you will, you know, you watch that and then you share among your own, your followers and whatnot. Spread that, you know, we, we, you know, make that shit go viral. Uh, that song has just been spreading out all over, and all of us just seeing seeing right now for uh, fights now is just uppercuts. So I'm just like, well, that had an effect. Uppercut season. Um, yeah, official scorecard boxing science. Uh, no, that's a that's a horrible joke. I'm not gonna repeat that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, like, I ain't gonna lie. I had to come up my mouth and I almost like bust out laughing. <laughs> that, that, that's a fucked up joke. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna repeat that joke. on the air, yo. <laughs> I cannot repeat that joke. Damn. Oh, so shout out Ring Gang TV, prolific in the building. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I can't. That joke is just that's just that's too that's that's wrong. <laughs> so many levels. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, you know, Elvis Rodriguez needs to improve, and Sims. Hopefully, hopefully, this is some momentum for him. Um, I was more disappointed though in the co-main. Well, co-main first of all, because 
I mean, I should not see Hank Lundy in a co-main uh, in 2021 on a, on a, for a fight like this, of this magnitude. But he was picked as the opponent for Jose Zapata, Zapata, who, you know, last October participated in probably one of the greatest slugfights you'll see in the last couple of decades against Ivan Barrett. All time. I mean, yeah. if anybody needed this kind of fight, it was him. So that's the only reason why I didn't complain. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't need it as a fucking co-main event. Yeah, no. If you want to put it as an opener or uh, or like a, or a prelim, like yeah, fuck it, do that. Because <laughs> we had two, we had two <laughs> whole home fights in a row before like a potential fight of the year. Like, come on, like yeah, this is yeah, this is what Top Rank was kind of bullshitting uh, on that one. And 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 and, and however, I mean, we all thought okay, you know, Hank Lundy will, you know, Zepeda, Zepeda is a quality fighter, so we all think okay, you know, Hank Lundy will give him some rounds and he'll eventually go away at some point. But man, you know, and, and, and funny thing is too is like everyone can see that Lundy was very unsteady. Like his footwork is all jittery. His legs, shape. yeah, his legs were bad. Yeah, it's bad. But for whatever reason, and he was he kept on throwing haymakers. Like we could see him like from way all the way over there. And what was what was disheartening was Zapata's defense was so trash. He was uh, Lundy was landing on them. He was landing those shots like half yeah. the time. Damn, like, this would have been Hank Lundy from five years ago. You would have probably had an upset. No, I'm saying, right? Anyone who's a little bit more sharper. And, and so Zepeda, maybe from three years ago. Fuck, I'm saying five. Yeah, and, and it's just like, it's, I mean, Lundy managed to cut Zapata legit underneath his eye. Um, he wobbled him. Like, he, he stunned him like, to the point where he did go down, but the referee ruled it. It was a slip. You know. So it was like a slip type of push. I mean, I could see it, but he yeah. was legit hurt from that. Yeah, he was legit hurt from the shot, and it's just like a, a fight that should have never saw, you know, should have never saw or heard the final bell. It just seemed like Zapata just was never in this fight. And I know he was drained because he because he barely made the weight, you know. But he had everything about this fight, this was an audition for an undisputed title shot, which he's which is a mandatory. And he just failed. Like it was just, you know, Lundy. I mean. I, Lundy, I mean, he he got off at times. Like I said, I mean, his defense. I mean, Lundy fought probably the best he's looked in years. I'll I'll, I'll keep it real with that. And it's yeah. still, and he and he still didn't look that good. <laughs> and his head movement was on point. He was like he needed Elvis needed some of that head movement. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying Zapata and Zapata like what all he's doing he's just pulling back all the time. And it seemed like you know moving your head from side to side seems to be a lost art because every oh, every fucking fights, man. Jeez. Yeah, but I think too. I think his was because Zapata was so jittery. Cause I think the I think he was shell shocked from the Barachek fight because, like, it seemed like he was he was reacting just to react. Like every single time that Lundy did any type of motion, dude just like took, just just like jerked back like immediately, yeah. like even before the nigga threw a punch. Yeah. So yeah. So, so, so mentally, I think Zapata might need a little help. For her say, like, I don't know. of a ruined fighter. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just call it like I see it. I'm gonna, his, I'm his temperament, he is ruined. It, it sounds that way. It sounds harsh, but remember, this is a guy in Zapata who never really took the initiatives in fights. He was always a react type of fighter. Yeah, not really assertive. The guy clearly has PTSD of the Berenshin fight, and it showed. Yeah, because I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess finding someone like Berenshin who doesn't give you a whole lot of time to to be as reactive. I mean, you either got to hurt him or he's going to hurt you. And I think going Zepeda on. needed to fight another threat. Like, he can't, like, he can't process, like, the, keep Zapata away from easy fights. Like, if you give him an easy fight, this is how he's going to look and you're going to give somebody an upset. Because right now, if somebody look at Zapata and they say, hmm, let me give him, let me throw him another job or see what happens. That mm-hmm. jobber is gonna look at the Lundy fight and see how dude was reacting. But I right, fuck it. Mm-hmm. If I just push the pace a little and just stay on him, hmm. Yeah, yeah. I thought this one would probably um, push him for a, a you know a Taylor fight because it's easy to make. But I don't know. This would be a struggle. Yeah, I mean he's a Mando, but I mean, he's not gonna be the first up to bat for it. It's Cat's all right. Yeah, but uh, as unfortunately, oh, no one wants to see that fight. Right? Yeah, it, it, it was just, it was that bad. Like I mean. Because the yeah, fact that Lundy sure. was competitive, kind of competitive with him, that's what made too competitive. Yeah, like like Zapata won like maybe by two rounds. Yeah, it, I mean, well, Lundy. I mean, in this case, Lundy on the official cards won two rounds on all three cards. 
and mean, the scores cool. were trash. So let's just point that out. Like, yeah, that's, look, that's, man, yeah, I Lundy said was, Pink Lundy did better than Ramirez did against Taylor. And that's facts. Yeah, that's true. Because I don't know all this shit I'm seeing on my timeline. Fuck it, let's go into it. Fucking main event, goddammit. I don't see all this shit on my timeline with all these motherfuckers saying, <laughs> close fight, close fight, uh, 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 close fight. I can see, no, no, you fucking can't see his fucking 114, 112. Ramirez won like four fucking rounds at best. Well, yo, yeah, well, well, damn, LB, well, five, but, He still I'd got his ass. I'd, I'd say five. Well, LB, then set it off, man. So, what are your thoughts about, what are your thoughts on Ramirez and Taylor? Great fucking fight. I told y'all last week that they gonna try to give it the fucking Ramirez. Yeah, I yeah. told you that. Yeah, I said too, like, if they, if, if Ramirez was able to return a knockdown, they would have finessed the win from. If, 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 but they, they, yeah. they can't do it, though. But yeah, it was, it was, it, it, yeah, yeah. Two knockdowns. Two, get the fuck out of here. Two knockdowns and he wins the fight by 114. One, is he the same nigga scored or Wilder or Fury won? <laughs> like what the fuck did I get? Oh no, it's the same guys who scored a post down from The only, I mean, the only thing that I could say that kind of hurt Taylor at the it was he didn't even hurt him. It was at the end, he kind of I felt like at the end he kind of took his foot off the get off the gas, but he had, he had banked up, he, had, he had banked more than enough rounds in to still win. So. I didn't like how he didn't close out the show strong enough. You could you uh Pat, you could argue that if Ramirez got a knockdown, that uh if if it was closer, Taylor would have actually tried the last three rounds instead of just you know just kind of taking his foot off the gap. Yeah, and yeah, then, I feel like fun. he got fucked out that knockout with uh Kenny Kenneth's uh, uh Kenny Bayless damn intervene intervening ass. Yeah, yeah. Bayless, like he was fighting down. I thought I, I was about to take it. It's, it's, it's funny because it's funny because like most people I know like always shit on Kenny Bayless. I'm like Kenny Bayless isn't that bad, but that last night I can't defend him. He was horrible last yeah, night. I, I, never, I never had a problem with him until last night. I mean, he's, he seems you know a little bit in the video, but he's, he's pretty you know good ref. But yeah, last night was kind of a he's thing. solid. He's like like dude, get solid, the fuck yeah. out the way. It's a P Diddy pump that he dancing ass out the motherfucking way. <laughs> <laughs> all up in the fucking video, all like, like, dude. There was a time I was like, yo, this shit gonna turn into damn um Mayweather uh, uh Whitaker soon. The fucking ref gonna get clocked with one. The fuck <laughs> <out of way. laughs> you, you think he caused that first? Soon as something comes what? through. No, go ahead. I was gonna say, you think uh Bayless played a, a huge role in that first knockdown? Not, yes. the first, not, not the first knockdown. The second, second one. The second one. one. Yeah, he yeah, fucked yeah. up both of them, but especially the second one. Mm-hmm. Taking all that extra fucking time. Oh, go this direction, go this way. Spinning him around. Dude, I, that was one point I thought I was like, is this bastard gonna fucking deduct the point from uh, Josh Taylor? <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Like, fuck. Like, dude, don't fucking ruin fights for me. Like, dude, I'm sick of this shit. You motherfuckers don't promote the goddamn fight all fucking month. Mm-hmm. Then, then motherfuckers gotta get. Niggas gotta promote it themselves within three days and, and stage a fight in the fucking uh, uh, the hallway. Mm-hmm. Now we got everybody tuned in. Y'all motherfuckers don't play it throughout the NBA games that motherfuckers is bitching and moaning about. What? We got two fucking boring ass uh, uh, caught fights underneath it. And then Kenny Bayless ass is fucking dancing around and all in the way and shit. <laughs> they put on the fucking bad boy for life bottles and, and take off the team and get the fuck out the way. <laughs> damn it that shit was annoying but yo I, and honestly it was almost a fight of the year like I might want to say fight of the year candidate like it was Stop a good there. fucking fight it was you almost, almost, almost. almost. I, mean, I mean it might be one of those I may have to rewatch again just to figure out where it is to me in terms of where I think it's a fight of the year candidate uh, Watch it up to the knockdowns. That's when I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't start judging. Like I don't start even thinking fight of the year candidates until August. So I'm, I, I won't, I won't go, I won't say if it's a fight of the year candidate or not. Cause we still have so many months to go. But it was a very good fight. The fuck out of you weren't here. You know, you weren't here with us when we was damn uh, had Peterson Lipinets as a fight of the year candidate. And it was actually, yeah. That was, and it was. That, that was a great fight. That was a great fight. They, they could they could come early, man. They just we gotta call them out. So so when so when January twenty twenty two come around and we doing the year end awards, you know, we could be like we could remember them shits because right now how many fights have been better for Estrada uh, Chocolatito, um, fucking uh the Katie Taylor fight with uh, uh Jonas. 
and then the opener on that PBC card with um I'm not forgetting his name all of a sudden. See, he fights for top rank for so many years and you know, nigga, that's yeah, like, that was a good fight. I know what the fucking fights you're talking about. That was a good fight. Shit, the fuck that old card is a card of the year. Fuck that. No, fucking <laughs> nearly Figueroa was almost a fight of the year, really. If it had a little more technique, yeah, so yeah, a little I more mean, skill. But yeah, I mean, but no, yeah, but all the fuck, man. But so far, at least all the ones that have been fight of the year candidates, none has actually pulled away as in, like the leading one. I mean, they've been, they've been it's mostly it's preference. Like it wasn't like last year where everyone could see what was fight of the year. You know, yeah, so. this is more preference. You you absolutely right. Like right now, maybe Chocolatito Estrada is robbery of the year already, but I, it, it might be leading. <laughs> I, um, I hate both of them got to win that. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, but yeah, no, uh, Ramirez and Taylor though. Like I said, I mean, Ramirez definitely. You know, in the first half of the fight, I mean, obviously Ramirez was. It seemed like you know the pressure was getting to Taylor because Taylor looked like he was uneven. Like he didn't know what he was doing at least for three rounds. Like. You know, like he, because he, he got he got cut over his left eye, but then Taylor's always getting cut in his left eye, and it looked like Taylor, it looked like Ramirez was making him really uncomfortable with body shots and everything. Like you know, it's like okay, you know, he, he's gonna, you know, this is he's gonna bully him eventually. But I, I'll give it to Taylor, it, it, even though it took him a little bit to adjust. When he did, yeah, it it, it, it was a wrap <laughs> after that, you know. And but it seemed like the fight slowly dissipated from Ramirez, like. I thought Ramirez would actually fight harder, you know, especially after especially after getting knocked down in six and seven. But it just seemed like he just he didn't know what to do. And uh, after that, um, and I, I have to say though, Taylor, like I don't like that dude, but dude, dude can fight. Like I mean, he's one of the people that's just like, Ugh, I hope he gets knocked out. But yeah, you know, you you honestly, you'd have to be a yeah, fool. Nobody lets Josh Taylor like. Whatever. I keep hearing like yo. The guy's a wanker and the guy's this, but he could fight. He's a bastard, this guy. He's a motherfucker. He's a man. Like, like, but what did he do to people? Like, just a couple of things, just a couple, you know, rumors out there. Yeah, I mean, he, he did have a racist incident. That's one thing. Yeah. Damn, what did he do? Like, like. He was calling an Asian guy at the club or something, something like that. He was drunk. Yeah. Kind of be racist yeah. to an Asian guy, supposedly. Actually, that was yeah. documented. Yeah. Oh, he had a racist, in, like, oh no, racist toward who? Like, wait, there's a difference. Guy, puts like an Asian guy at a club or something, there's some drunk, you know, little rant. Yeah, he got drunk and let off a couple of epithets, I think. Oh, oh. So, yeah. I mean, Which always amazes me, because I'm just like, even if you're angry, I'm like, oh, it's the first thing you have to do is that racist, uh, racist epithet. <laughs> I'm like, you can take anything <laughs> else, there's so many other insults. <laughs> but PJ, well, I need but, more information on that. Um, um, uh, but, uh, but but PJ though, what, what did you think about that fight? Get you know, let us know your thoughts. All right, so the fight for it it is ironic because uh, me and LB were actually talking about this uh, back and forth uh, about the Southpaw Orthodox uh, situation. It's a case of uh, positioning, how often the jab is, and also lazy tendencies, and see who capitalizes on who. So while uh, Ramirez might have had a start with it, as the fight went through, and as he started, I guess, to fade a bit, this is where Taylor started to come through with his counters and his ability to come forward. But it, it was a bit of a mirror for what they were both trying to do. It's just one person was better at keeping at it versus the other. The knockdowns definitely made it, like, seal the deal about, like, who's going to be controlling the fight. For lefty-righty, your jab is always going to be an issue, so it's a case of who can control the lead hand, and whoever can do that has a better option to do anything with it. But at the same time, just because you have control doesn't mean it can't be capitalized on. Those were the things that came into an issue of it. Then it became a case of the power shots. Then it became a case of who threw the body shots, who threw that. So the pressure that Ramirez had at the beginning was a good start, but it just didn't have it. But in terms of like maybe somebody might be falling back at the beginning, they could also be watching it. And it might have been the case, but it also is the case of because lefty righty, there's a good chance either like any kind of clash in a weird angle is going to happen. When the knockdowns happened, it was just the case of Taylor is going to keep controlling it. And then towards the end, Ramirez actually threw a really good short punch combination, which is actually really good for keeping a lefty in place. He just never did it after that. I think he just did it because of spur of the moment, as well as uh, Robert Garcia just screaming at him and it just got him going. And then his gas tank ran out. Yeah. Overall, it was a good tactical fight. It was just once the knockdowns happened, you could see the things going further and further away. The scorecard made no sense to me, but otherwise, it was a good fight. 
Yeah, uh, it's, 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 I find it convenient that all three judges had 114, 112. Like, yeah, well, it, it's very rare that I had because uh, it, it was the same thing with the fucking Lundy's a pay fight too. Like the same, all of them had the same score. Like, no, there's something something is not right <laughs> about that shit. Like, I mean, honestly, I I, I should have actually seen what the scorecards actually look like because I know usually they post them on Twitter or whatever. But yeah, like I said before, like if, if Ramirez was actually able to return a knockdown, they would it would have probably been like some one thirteen, one twelve type of shit or some shit, some bullshit like that. You know, they will they they would have finessed. I mean, he had his chances because he he couldn't he couldn't put his game back together after I think the second knockdown would kind of did it. Yeah, it's, yeah, because that uppercut uppercut season though, like he should have been stopped really right there. Yeah, because you mother so fuck you motherfuckers for ruining my KO prediction. <laughs> Fight should have been finished right there. That's really why LB mad because he wanted he wanted he wanted to hit on that KO prediction. <laughs> but it's not because look, it was over officiated. Like honestly, like the the way the whole setup. I, I told this last week. It was set up for Ramirez to win. Bob wants that damn Crawford versus the whole Mexican population type of pay per view because it, it'll sell more or it'll get more attention. Then Taylor Ramirez, I'm sorry, Taylor Postal. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, fucking Taylor. I'm sorry, bro, Crawford Taylor. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's true. So he was doing. They were doing everything to set this shit up for Ramirez to win. Look how many. Look how many close decisions. Low key, Ramirez got some of that Canelo plot armor too. <laughs> Let's yeah. be honest. He gets a little, you know, leniency on these rounds. I mean, remember, even Ward was like. Uh, nah, nah. He's pitching a shutout on uh, Postal, and all of us is like, oh, damn, what, what you watching? Yeah, that was saying like, I mean, unless he's he, a jack clinic. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, yeah. I mean, he had, he had close calls with him and Zapata too. I mean, well, Zapata also fought Ramirez. And- I think he kind of he nicked the Zapata fight. It was close, but I, I give it to Ramirez. The Postal, like, yeah, yeah, that's a draw. That's a draw at best for him. But I thought he lost. <clears throat> Yeah, so, he got way too much fucking credit. Like that's the thing, Ramirez gets too much credit in his fights for round wise. Like even against Hooker, like I felt he lost like for three rounds in that shit too. Like mm-hmm. Hooker was making him look bad as far as the first the first half of that fight until it ended. Mm-hmm. And Ramirez is good. Like I like how he was able to adjust and make Taylor come to him. Then he was able to open up the counter and. He was leading. He was mixing up the strategy, but yeah, he overall, was. I don't think he could take the power. No, he couldn't. And I think, and, uh, but another thing that Taylor also did too, and you could probably say why he probably had those scores so goes is he took his foot off the gas in the last three, four rounds, maybe. You know, so it's but he like, really won. He really lost the last two. Like, mm-hmm. like his, yeah. even though he took his foot off the gas toward the end. Taylor was still winning. It's just the last two rounds is where he didn't really do anything. Right. Felt like yeah. I was watching Winky Wright in a, a championship fight. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's crazy too. And like, like I said, I mean, if Taylor's gonna go forward, you know, now I understand. Like Taylor, right now, I mean, this is his fifth zero that he took in a row, and three of them were like really rated. Three of them were champions. So like, yeah, so yeah, I mean, he's. I mean, I mean, he, he definitely earned it, but. You know he's gonna have to go in the future. Like I mean, if it's a close fight and he's and he's and he's coasting like that, it could cost him on the cards. You know, I mean, I hope, yeah, I mean, none of this like, coasting shit, man. He, yeah, I mean, nervous as a motherfucker. Well, I mean, he, I think he respected Ramirez's power because he, you know, Ramirez was tagging him. I mean, even though Ramirez was tired and gas, he was you know giving him some. some he was. Food. He was. See, Ramirez yeah, was yeah. dog walking him at certain points in the fight. Yeah, because I mean, they were, I mean, because they, they were both landing. Uh, Hellacious body shots on each other too. Like I mean, the body the body work from on both of, um, from both of those guys were good. You know, like, yeah. and that's what and that's what and, and Ramirez has a tank too. So when you're able to make it, so that's why the first time I actually really seen him like start, you know, like you know, struggling a little bit. Yeah, I think Ramirez probably, got a concussion. Yeah, he was he was concussed. He looked he wasn't look, didn't look all there. Definitely, around like round ten, Taylor was Taylor's won that round round ten, but the end um, Ramirez hurt him bad. It looked like right before the bell. And that's the one where um then Taylor lands Andre type of counter off the ropes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was he was on the ropes. Yeah, I think I thought Taylor took that round just off that punch again. 
So he was going in, but remember the last twenty seconds was, was giving him a couple of hard shots. You know? Yeah, I mean he tried. He, I mean he tried to put it together, but like I said, it was just it was an effort that was just a little bit too late in the fight for him. And you know, it's a shame he couldn't return a knockdown. So, I mean, so boxing, you know, has its first. Uh, well, I don't say first. I mean, has it has a new undisputed champion in the four belt era, the sixth or the fifth, depending how you know, depending on how technical you want to get with the one with the one undisputed champion. But at one forty, having another one so quickly and after like three years. You know, so I mean, you can. When the division got loaded and good again. Yes, the division, like you can, you know, you can probably consider this like the unofficial final of the World Boxing Super Series 140 tournament. And yes, even though yes, Taylor did win the official tournament, like this was the fight everyone wanted to see. Like this, this this probably closed out a chapter of 140. Uh, Facts, and honestly, it's funny. Like if you was rocking with us and listening to the podcast from like. Since we started, fuck all that. Yeah. You will kind of see how, how our voices and everything, our episodes kind of led up to this fight because we were anticipating this shit for a minute. Yeah, we were. And it delivered. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Despite I mean, all the fuckery with the refs, the judging, the promoters, it happened. So yeah, we, I shit on top ranking Bob. I'll shit on everybody, but he did make this fight come together. So I salute him for that. But yeah, you still got explaining to do with some other shit. Yeah, you know, we definitely like. I mean, definitely salute Josh Taylor. I mean, at, at the point in pound for pound sense, like honestly, like I mean, he's top five. Like I mean, at, and that's minimal top oh, five. Yeah. Like, top five like, for sure. <clears throat> doesn't uh, have doesn't somebody have statistical data they could run right now? <laughs> oh yeah, your boy. Yeah, my boy. I, I always got the analytics on deck. You feel me? So let's 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 get into that. Let's get into that. So. Last night, after somebody became undisputed, Mr. Josh Taylor, you know what I'm yes. saying? We, we had to see, you know, what the deal was with how we rating him. You know what I'm saying? Dude might be a wanker, but the dude can fucking fight. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fact, fact, fact. Dude can fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll even, you know, quote my boy Adrian Broner when they asked him about Josh Taylor. Oh, oh, that white boy? Oh, he cold. <laughs> <laughs> he cold. That's, yo, that's what we've been saying about Josh Taylor. If you know, you know. So, you know, Ring Gang, you know, we had the hottest polls and we needed to ask, you know, we needed to ask the people what they thought, you know what I'm saying? Where do you rate Josh Taylor pound for pound wise? So do you rate him top three? Top five, top ten, or top fifteen. We had thirty-nine votes, and just, just, just by drawing this off the bat, if you pick top fifteen, you're a fucking idiot. So I had to do this. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> fucking idiot. So, yeah, definitely. I second that fucking. Um, you're a fucking idiot. Comment. Yes, you are. If you pick top fifteen, because realistically. Ramirez was already like top fifteen as is, so or maybe even twelve. Taylor was already top ten. If, if you just want to be honest about it, so if you yeah. did top fifteen, yeah. Um, so there's a but, wall you need to throw yourself into. Thankfully, of the 39 votes, only 5% said top 15, which is like one or two. So whoever those one and two people are, won yourself. But yeah, uppercut season yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but for the rest of them, of the 39 votes, 49% said top five. 28% said top 10. And 18% said top three. Yeah. So it's been, it's been spoken. The people have spoken. The man top five. Yeah, and he I mean, might not top even three, be but top five. I could definitely see he top five, and he might not even be five. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he, yeah, I, mean, I know. I know most people probably have him at four. I mean, I, I, I got him at four. I got him at four for sure. Hey, I think part of three. It's like either three or four, depending on how you want to interchange couple. Yeah, I think I have him as uh three, but um, you, and that you guys right can find there. out officially where we all gonna have these guys ranking because. We're gonna be having the um. We're gonna be changing. I mean, we're updating the ringgangradio.com pound for pound list. It's on the site all the time. Like uh, Pat scores, Pat's list is there. Mines, uh, King P, if you believe prolific. 
Oh, the, funny, the funny thing is going to be where in two months, you know, if a certain somebody becomes undisputed that has Ooh. three belts at 154, now That's it's going to be now it's going to be an uncomfortable choice because people are going to have to remove somebody from the top five that they might not want to remove. Because mm-hmm. y'all keep putting y'all, because y'all got Crawford up in top five. That's why. Oh, I've heard Butter too for a while. I've heard Butter too for a while, but if if Charlo, you know, it's not hitting though. Like honestly, look, the only way Jamel could uh, leapfrog Josh Taylor pound for pound if he knocks out fucking Castaño. Yeah, if he has the same type of fight, if he wins the same type of fight. Then he might be like, they might just be back and forth right there. You're neck and neck right now. Neck like. and neck. Somebody, if, if he wins by KO, he overtakes him. That, that's it for me. <laughs> but I don't know how you could have um, Crawford ahead of either one of these guys. Like, that's just my humble opinion. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like I said, it's gonna be interesting to like I said because now, I mean, he's not gonna be the only undisputed champion. Like, I mean, there are other, you know, there are other champions that are gonna be unifying soon, and you know, there's, there's gonna be some movement. So, I mean, definitely, I mean, definitely by media. Just make sure you don't miss that when we do update on our website. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, it's, it's gonna happen next month in June. We're gonna be updating it. So, like I said, y'all always tune in and, and check out ringgameradio.com. We'll be updating those um pound for pound uh, rankings pretty soon in June. Mm-hmm. And you know we'll let y'all know when we do. We might have a podcast episode about it, but that shit's definitely changing. You gonna see it. You gonna see some um some some movement in that bitch. Yep, absolutely. So yeah, but oh, overall, like I said, it was a great fight in top break. You know, even though I mean, honestly, the prelim undercard was better than the main undercard. They they should have had that shit on the undercard. For real, if you if you watched it, but yeah, you know, the main event delivered, and Josh Taylor deserves all the credit, all, all the credit in the world. And honestly, if you if you talk shit about Josh Taylor, you, you simply just either haven't watched him fight before, or you're just an idiot. <laughs> yeah, you just hate the wanker. Are you a fucking wanker? Yeah, yeah wanker. That can't box. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, you could be a wanker and box, but you can't be a wanker and can't box. So, you know. Facts. So yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, good shit, motherfucker. That was a good, that was good shit. Uh, don't want to really get into t- no more top rank until a little later because you know we still got smoke for them. At some point, yeah, we we definitely got some more smoke for top. Yeah, rank. yeah. Well, just keep listening. <laughs> yeah, keep listening. Uh, but yeah. So now we just going.